Hi, good morning. My name is Kevin McDermott and I'm with Imperis and I'm going to give a short talk this morning on exploring the next generation of SOC architectures with virtual platforms and RISC-V. So just as we get started here, I'll give a short introduction to Imperis. As many across the semiconductor industry is aware, you'd never tape out a chip without simulation. At Imperis, we believe nobody should develop embedded software without simulation. Imperis develops simulators, tools, debuggers and models, especially processor models, to help system developers and software designers get products up and running before hardware is available. We're 10 years old, uh, based out of the UK, and come from an experience of EDA in simulators and verification, uh, processors and embedded software. Uh, further information is available here at our website, imperis.com, and our models are available on ovpworld.org. So this morning's agenda, I'm going to talk about the architectural analysis, the software development, and the processor and SSE verification that's really been impacted by the adoption of RISC-V. So let's get started here and talk about architectural analysis. Amdor's law uh, started a few years ago, uh, really as you scale a single thread performance across a parallel architecture of an array of processors, there's diminishing returns that are really based around the bottlenecks of a key uh, operation that really can't scale beyond that single thread. So over 35 years of processor innovation, what we've seen with the adoption of Moore's law, which is more transistors and, and more performance every year, the single thread performance started to peak out around 2005. And this was a point of diminishing returns as more transistors led to uh, perhaps less frequency and more power consumption. So a single thread performance started to reach a bottleneck. And that really looks like uh, 2005 is what we now know as the era of the multi-core adoption. So if we look at the new applications for machine learning and AI. Um, they're very compute intensive. Uh, an example I'll talk about later is AlexNet that has a 1 billion uh, Mac multiply accumulate uh, for image recognition. So if the x86 architecture is not getting faster, and we talked about the possible limitations of uh, Moore's law, the approach of parallel architectures has got a real appeal. But how do we avoid the bottlenecks that Amdahl's law predicts? So this is the key aspect of this talk, talking about the correct parallel architectures. There's many approaches to different architectures. And as I mentioned, uh, Empiris has, has got quite a long history. And we like to use some of our presentation materials. So here's a slide from 2007. Um, when we're looking at the complexities of some of the new multi-core architectures and how to really make them accessible to programmers to design, develop and optimize software. And we're really looking at the, the failures of really exploiting the hardware, sorry, the software really limited the adoption of some of these hardware architectures. And unfortunately, this still plays true to some examples that you may have known uh, more recently. So in AI, some of the established software that's been running on the cloud really helps uh, this next step to optimize hardware. So the benefit of having these frameworks, uh, large data sets and good algorithms gives you a solid starting point from which to start. So looking across the architecture exploration for SOCs, uh, there's an array of processor options uh, that one could imagine. Uh, this is a slide I can see here from Xilinx that uh, Synopsys has also uh, adopted. So it's a really good illustration of some of the architectural choices you might go through. At the start, you could look at a, a, a single core, quad core uh, arrangement, uh, scalar processors with vector extensions that could lead towards more uh, dedicated hardware, uh, SIMD extensions, and then looking towards more microarchitecture choices, you could look towards uh, customized and optimized instructions. And then as you look at the fine tuning of many, many core arrays is really looking to how do you optimize the interconnect and communications between these processors. So how can we help? Uh, in Paris, we develop processor models. We've got over 240 in the library. Uh, we manage all of the, uh, we model all of the mainstream architectures. We've got a library of behavioral components. These are the periphery elements that will go around and build these subsystems. And our technology allows you to build these models in a hierarchical form. So you can have a sub-core system with a couple of processors and then build that up into arrays of more complex architectures. 
Our simulators co go from cores to systems. Uh, we manage 300 MIPS to 2 billion instructions in second. We support uh, bare metal, multi-core, AMP and SMP. An example I'll give later is a quad-core system booting Linux in under 10 seconds. So very usable for uh, software development. These give a full platform debug analysis. So this is really useful in many core arrays where you can actually look across the entire design and introspect all of the activities across the processor nodes. Advanced tools for analysis and profiling. And then the uh, really the hardware verification is really coming into the fore now as we look to use these reference models in UVM simulators from Cadence, Mentor, Synopsys or, or Metrics. This is an overview of some of our processor models we can talk about in more detail. We have the full ARM uh, capabilities, including the V8 64-bit architectures with SV extensions. Um, uh, MIPS is well known and well established in many markets. Uh, Synopsys, ARC, uh, and then the RISC-V I'll cover in a bit more detail. But we cover all the mainstream uh, core providers and as well as the full architecture specifications. One of our partners is Andes, and they recently announced a vectors-based core. So we're pleased to be working with the leaders in this space, bringing the vectors really into the RISC-V flexibility, which is ideal for these type of AI applications. So a little bit more about our vectors engine. This supports the full uh, RISC-V uh, vector specification. Our model performs very well, so it allows you to model and simulate many core configurations. Um, an example here, we've scaled up to uh, over a thousand cores um, and we'll show, talk about some of our customer experiences in the next uh, slide. So a customer project, uh, this was based around 150 cores that was correct for their application. Um, their data set and their software runs in about two hours at 500 MIPS on this simulated engine. Uh, the key part about this for the whole system project is this is one year before the system, uh, the tape out of the RTL. So that gave them a very good confidence both on the architecture and then the software uh, development phases. Another project uh, here with a partner in Japan, ESOL Trinity. This is an interesting platform with a ARM a Cortex A57 and 17 RISC-V processor cores uh, managing this AlexNet uh, image race recognition deep neural network. So just to look at the algorithm here a little bit, this is a structure of the different steps that are required. And you can see that the number of floating point operations and the number of multiply accumulates is very significant in these type of applications. So you can see that that lends itself well to some approaches with parallel processing. Looking at the analysis, you can profile uh, different operations of a, an algorithm and identify the correct allocation of how these process routines would fit onto the process architecture. And this is a typical block diagram you could imagine with a, an ARM A57 as the control processor and then 17 RISC-V processors really to undertaking the bulk of the uh, compute workload. With our system, we're then able to build the virtual platform and look at the software running across all of these processes. And you can see how you would look at the different activities on the different processes and then look at the performance metrics uh, as a dashboard as you look to optimize uh, your whole operation. In addition, you can do some debug and look at the different uh, interactions between these processes and give you a full experience. And this is some uh, classic results of looking through some trained data set and then you can fine tune the algorithm for the particular application. So that was the architecture analysis. I'll now talk briefly about custom instructions. As we look to optimize performance, clearly the move to Polter Core is a very early uh, good decision. Um, optimize the pipeline and dedicate the processors, the right processor in the right place. And then look at the way the data is moving around the system and maybe optimize uh, some network interconnects. Custom instructions really lend itself well to optimizing both the application and possibly those interconnections. So this is a flow just to talk through how you would optimize a custom instruction. Starting with the C code, you can profile your application, your algorithm, and look for those key hotspots of routines that could form uh, useful instructions. The balance here is to find a fine grain instruction that will still give you the software flexibility. You can then take th through some modeling 
uh, analyze and profile. And then ultimately this becomes your reference model, which will help with software development and also the verification of the RTL. So just to talk through the beginning steps, uh, you'd look to look at your software application uh, using this instruction accurate simulation, uh, debug and trace, really make sure you've got your C application as optimized as it can be on the standard architecture. So here we've got an example. Uh, this is based on the ChaCha20 uh, algorithm used for some security applications. Use an instruction accurate simulator, our um, model of a RISC-V32 processor. Um, we can operate this particular code routine uh, at about a billion uh, instructions on a standard uh, processor PC. So now we're going to look at some optimizations of these critical routines and steps. As we start to look at these uh, applications, you can look at the code and transfer the code to a model. And as it will run faster in, as a model, as a custom instruction, that shows you a potential benefit and speed uh, improvement. This could be an iterative process as you look at different trade trade-offs and choices and really look to optimize uh, the system balance. So debug and analysis becomes very important here as you're developing new uh, instruction architectures, you need to make sure that the end application, your software developers make full use of these new capabilities. Once we've developed our new uh, hardware, the software development can start in earnest. Um, one of our customers, Nagra, um, really believes in uh, custom uh, dedicated hardware is good for security, but software is absolutely critical and Software has to be very ruggedly tested and matured before it's ever released out to the field. Processor models. For RISC-V, we have a full specification envelope model that covers all the options and extensions available within the RISC-V specification. This includes the vectors and bit manipulations, which were recently added, and they're still going through the final ratification process. Um, we support the mainstream suppliers such as Andes and Sci-Fi with their full breadth of cores, including vectors and some open source cores, uh, open hardware, the core five uh, processors and low risk uh, and some others. These all lend themselves towards custom instructions that can be added by the users to really optimize for the particular applications. And um, there's some more information available on the link uh, there. Again, as I said earlier, the library of components really extends to a very rich set of periphery elements that you can stitch around uh, these processes as you build up your full system. We've developed a number of these reference platforms that are available, and we call them uh, EPKs, Extendable Platform Kits. These are good reference designs that are very flexible, and you can modify and change them and evolve them to fit your particular project. Here's an example showing an Andes N25, and it supports a, a free RTOS uh, bring up. So these library of components are very useful. And uh, we've got a, many, a couple more I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, within our software development environment, the virtual platform can be multi-core with peripheries and memories. And then we support the full introspection across the entire design with our analysis tools. This gives you full visibility into all the activity and all the processes with cross triggering and cross tracing. So you can really see how and where your software is developing and where your critical uh, software algorithms need to be advanced. And this is another example with the uh, Sci-5 uh, Freedom Unleashed uh, 540. As you can see here, this is a block diagram showing the configuration of the quad core configuration with the E51 control processor. And this is available as a traditional development board. But we developed a virtual platform, which allows the full development of software uh, and can boot Linux in under 10 seconds. And this really doesn't show the timeline here because we can go from a, an initial block diagram concept into a virtual platform well before you have silicon or even a development board. So there's a whole timeline that's not really represented on this slide. So returning to the schedule, Let's look at the impact on RISC-V for SOC designs in the area of processor and SOC verification. We recently announced our relationship with Mellanox on RISC-V processor verification. They're involved with a custom processor design and also looking at extending with custom instructions, which is a topic I talked about earlier in today's presentation. RISC-V OVPSIM is a free instruction set simulator that we made available to the community on GitHub. 
We developed this around our work with the compliance work for the RISC V International Compliance Team. We started with some uh, developed tests to help with the compliance work. But what we found is we really needed a flexible model that would cover all the parameters and variations and options within RISC V. This led to us creating an envelope model, which is completely configurable across all the specification options and choices that RISC V has available. This can be used for also software development and uh, bare metal for a single processor bring up if you want to start looking and investigating uh, Risk v and it's available here on GitHub. We've also recently extended it to support the latest vectors and bit manipulation draft specification as that's useful for those working groups working on these new extensions. However, compliance is not verification. Compliance is very important. It's essential for the ecosystem uh, software compatibilities and the whole structure around RISC V is this uh, ecosystem of compatibility. However, a complete processor design verification requires much more extensive and exhaustive testing given the microarchitecture features and the complexities of the instruction set, custom instructions, there's a number of options that need to be fully explored and tested as part of a complete verification test plan. And I'll cover a couple of these in the next slides. Working together with Google on the Instruction Stream Generator project, we've established RISC-V reference models to help with the verification flow with a random instruction generator. To cover the corner cases of a processor, there's a number of options to look for. Directed tests, the compliance tests I talked about earlier, to really look at the details and functionalities and the mathematical operations associated with the processor. However, a processor is a complex state machine and to really cover some of the corner case scenarios. An approach with a random instruction generator really challenges and stretches these corner case scenarios. However, a completely random set of instructions could be illegal or, or non-operational. So the art and science of an instruction generator is to really fine tune and look at a particular coverage area and look at the valid expressions of these instructions in a non-standard configuration, really stretch the architecture. So that's the generator. You can feed that through a compiler and then run the code on an RTL simulator and the Verilog of your new processor design. In parallel, also run the same instruction stream on the reference model and then compare. You can also then look at the coverage. It's important to do coverage at the end of the process is you want to make sure you actually look at the instructions that will actually run and not cause to be an interrupt or other exception. This environment works with all the system Verilog uh, UVM simulators such as Cadence, Mentos, Synopsys and the new metrics uh, cloud-based environment. However, that is not the complete verification process. Another approach is to use a system Verilog test bench. This allows a complete dynamic wrapper around the RTL of the process you want to test and embed the reference model in that same system Verilog environment. This gives you a lockstep step and compare to enable to run the test code that I talked about earlier, directed tests or the van random uh, stream generators and really exhibit all the process of behaviors and characteristics as it looks at dynamic heart interactions, uh, processor interrupts, and all the extensions that you may have developed with custom instructions. Under a full step and compare control with coverage, this is the heart and essence of a professional RISC-V verification test plan. So in conclusion, I'd like to say that Imperis fast simulation models allow software to run on a virtual platform many months before RTL is committed with full heterogeneous support with the processes I mentioned earlier, covering OS or RTOS uh, environments, allows full software development many months before hardware or silicon is available. This allows analysis of performance of different hardware configurations of choices, which is essential for the next generation of AI algorithms, which are looking to accelerate and advance these uh, AI and embedded uh, applications. With detailed software analysis, profiling and performance, full debug tooling, it runs the same as a software development environment with a hardware board sitting next to your workstation. 
This gives the programmer an ideal first experience of a new design. With all the current RISC-V specification features and custom instructions supported, it's an ideal starting point as you explore new RISC-V capabilities and options with the freedom of an open ISA. The Imperius RISC-V reference model is ideal for processor DV and includes the system Verilog UVM wrapper that I mentioned earlier. Thank you for your time today. Uh, here's some links for more information about our solutions for RISC-V and working with virtual platforms in general. And I hope we'll be able to join for some Q&A questions over the chat links.